Morning, boys. Sorry, I just woke up. So what do you want to talk about? Uh, whatever you... I gotta go get ready right in here, boys. That is a 350 5.7 liter tuned port injection. You know, you can't get better than that. That's what year this is. Guess. 90? 87. Pretty good shape, eh? Yo. Are you ready? I'll be there in 10 minutes, alright? We waiting outside because I'm not coming in. Got it? All right. That was Ricky. Ricky's my partner. This is my nine millimeter. Bought one for Ricky last year for his birthday. It's small, compact, easy loading, fast action. Good little starter guy. Go to the 20 Smith, that's where I'm gonna go pick up Ricky. Well, I decided to hire this film crew to document my life. I, I've got a feeling something's gonna happen to me. You ever get that feeling? Yeah. So, you know, to have a bit of my life on, on film, I just thought it'd be pretty cool. I always looked up to you know, Clint Eastwood and people like that, and you know, different movies, and I just thought it'd be kind of cool. You know, people can watch it and learn from it. Because you know, I'm not that bad of a guy, really. You know, I'm just trying to make a few dollars. I'm a businessman. I didn't have many friends growing up, but uh, Ricky kind of tagged along with me. You know, bought a bit of weed off me, and used to get stoned stuff, and have a few drinks. You know, it kind of grew on me. Lucy, she's a trailer park hoe. You know, there's nothing wrong with that if you're attracted to them. Lucy hates my guts, and I don't like her either, and it doesn't bother me. She put me through hell. I'm 16 years old. We were at this party one night. You know, I got pretty drunk. I, I don't, it was, you know, did you ever have those nights where you just totally blank out and you wake up the next morning? I, well, I had one of those nights, and... I woke up with her next to me in bed naked. I don't know what the hell happened. I just got out of there. And so, you know, Ricky hooks up with her and becomes engaged as his first girlfriend. You know, one of those first girlfriend things. And I don't know, he's engaged now. And I don't have the heart to tell him. And I, I can't understand it. You know, he, he's working hard paying bills. And she sits around the house all day smoking cigarettes and doing God knows what else. Lucy's got a real problem with me drinking and driving. You know, it's none of her business what I do. People that get caught drinking a drive are stupid. For instance, Ricky. We were at a party, and uh, you know, I, I hung out. I slept outside in the picnic table out back. Ricky decides to go home because Lucy was going nuts, phoning him and shit. So he had to go and lost his license. All right, you know, it, Ricky's got a bit of an attitude. Ever since he's left this park, he thinks he's above everybody. You know, fine, you have to leave the park because you want to have a baby, get married, and, you know, have a good little white picket fence, garage, you know, backyard, basement type dwelling. That's fine, but you are from the park. You will always be from the park, and if you think you are better than me because you don't live in the park, you know, I don't have time for you. If I could live in a nice house if I wanted to because I've got money, 
I'm a hard-working guy, but I like where I live, and there's nothing wrong with that. And if I want to drink, if I want to do a bit of coke, smoke some weed, sell some drugs, drive around in my vet, I'll do it, because that's who I am. A lot of people can't understand me. I take care of people's problems. They give me a call, I take care of it. I don't like what I do, but you know, somebody's got to do it. I started my business five years ago. You know, it took a long time to get a good client base, but you know, after five years, you're pretty well in there. You got to make sure the timing's right, and the timing is a key thing. If you do a job and the timing isn't at the right time, then you're going to fuck everything up. And that's not what I do. I'm a professional. Yeah, right now, it, the expenses are up to $300. We're only getting paid $600 for the job. But right now, it's principal. I mean, this guy, this guy really pisses me off. We met up with him a few times already and starts mouthing off at us and stuff, saying he's not afraid of us. And you know, that's a whole part of the job, you know. You want to inflict a little bit of terror into the people that you're after. My wish is that if something does happen to me, you know, maybe, maybe you guys can take this film show it at high schools or something and you know teach people a lesson you know this is real my life is real attitudes everybody around here has an attitude you go inside the park people are looking at me staring at me seeing me drinking you know it's my problem I'll deal with it and I don't find it it is a problem so it's not a problem okay don't look at me so I'm in jail been here for two and a half years I can handle it. Uh, it's not that tough. But I thought I should finish off my documentary with me being in jail just to, you know, let people know this is what happens to you if you really, you know, if you want to take the path that I have taken in my life. Through counseling, I, I was told that, you know, there's nothing really wrong with me. I also realized that this whole psychic thing that I, you know, I thought I was going to die, and that's what the psychic told me. But what I've come to realize is that I'm not really going to die yet. I'm just, my life has just ended for a little while. It's been put on pause. I gotta, I gotta, I've got to stay clean because I don't want to end up back in here, even though it's not that bad. But, but it is, it's not good. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. And um, I'm paying the price for it right now, and I, you know, I'm not upset I'm in jail because I knew I did a lot of bad things, and I broke the law every day, and I'm paying for it. But, you know, I've, I've really got my shit together now, and I think that I will be okay.